All right, hello everyone. My name is Brenda Vega, and today I'm going to be presenting presentation number five on undocumented students and immigrant deportation. So while going through the readings that were applicable to this presentation, I learned that being an undocumented individual, undocumented student is a very scary reality for many because there are thousands of undocumented individuals throughout the nation. It doesn't receive the attention that it deserves from the standpoint, from a standpoint that's realistic and true and shows the crude life that these individuals face is that it tends to focus on attempting to assimil assimilate them to or as closely to what an American should be or focuses on alienating those who already feel unwanted and pressured to fit the mold that is imposed upon them. So I'm going to start off with a quick little summary about the authors of each reading. So ring number one was authored by Giulia McDonald, Nieto del Rio, and Miriam Jordan. Giulia was a national reporter of the New York Times who graduated from Columbia University, and Miriam was a correspondent for the New York Times who graduated from Stanford University. Both want to report on the complexities and instability of immigration policies and the effects that they have on immigrants. And this entails immigrants that came in legally and illegally. Now, this written piece came out in June 18th of 2020, and both writers met in Boston, Massachusetts, but they pulled their experiences and their passions for this subject, Julia from LA, and Miriam from her world -like, worldwide experiences because she's someone that's traveled around the world a lot. I believe she knows like five different language, five different languages. And they did this following Biden's public endorsement and support of DACA, of DACA and um, the contrast that was seen when the Texas judge ruled it unlawful. Um, said that Barack Obama had overstepped his authority back in 2012 when he supported it and ultimately they aim to depict current instability for DACA dependence. Reading number two was authored by Grecia Mondragon who was co-author of the book We Are Not Dreamers and Documented Scholars Theorize and Documented Life in the United States. She herself was an undocumented student who attended UCLA back in 2010 and was placed on subject to dismissal. So she has a personal standpoint from the negative effects that being placed on dismissal as an undocumented student um, entail. And she was a very power, a dedicated DACA advocate. Um, she authored the, the chapter, the chapter that she authored focused on the embarrassment that comes with undocumented student being placed on undocumented student probation. Um, it was released in July of 2020, and she pulled her experiences from her time in Los Angeles, California. And ultimately, she wanted to share the ways in which her university had failed her along with the students that she interviewed post the 2012 DACA passage. So even after DACA was present, students continued to feel that they were failed. Reading number three was authored by Gabrielle Cabrera, who was also co-author of the same book. She is a PhD candidate in the Department of Anthropology at Rutgers University, and the chapter that she authored focused on the presence of a neoliberal logic in universities. And I'll go into more detail as to what this entails. Um, so again, released in July of 2020, and she pulled her experiences from San Joaquin Valley, where that area is where she tended to, um, that's where her focus shifted to, that's that's what piqued her interest. Um, and she did this to explore youth without DACA enrolled in a university, those with DACA who worked, and specifically older undocumented women who on top of struggling as women struggled even more because they were undocumented. And she also used interviews from students and her own experiences. Now on to general content and the main themes of the written pieces and essays. So reading number one focused on the DACA instability and necessity from those that rely on it, the presidential support from Biden and the contrast from the Texas federal judge that found it unlawful the old requirements that now impede acceptance into the program. 
So it was established in 2012, and those same requirements continue on till now. So that cuts out a lot of people from being able to apply. And it also focused on the newest court ruling that froze DACA and does not allow for new acceptance of new applicants. Rather, it just maintains itself for those who were already accepted into it. This written piece is analytical with empathetic appeal to, to um, the subject. And I believe that there is signs that show that both authors are in favor of DACA because it's, again, very empathetic. It has empathetic um, highlights. And for reading number two, it focuses on UCLA. It focuses on the interest for academic success in undocumented students. And that's what's given the most importance in the identity of these individuals. It focuses on the term dreamer and how being used has a stereotype of academic excellence and that's imposed upon those undocumented students. It focuses on academic probation leading to unique challenges. So on top of already being undocumented, being undocumented and on probation is very different from for an undocumented student than it would be, let's say, for a regular student who is non-documented. Um, it highlights achievements that result from perfect factor alignment. So again, from how many issues beyond being a documented that these undocumented students have it's very hard for those issues all together in that person to allow them to pursue an academic journey where they achieve as the public wants them to this type of written piece is narrative it's personal conducted via research and it shows evident passion and experience both in the field and through experience Reading number three focuses on the University of California, Merced, where diversity is placed as a commodity for these universities. They use diversity images for ranking and for their image. It introduces neoliberal ideology, which is the use of students' experiences and stories and displaying them for the benefit of university. It focuses on undocumented students being used as exhibits. They are being used, displayed to show that the university is meeting what diversity they are supposed to be meeting. Um, it focuses on private funding being used and how it can be manipulated to not allocate what's necessary to undocumented students. It focuses on the terminology of aliens, parents being criminalized, if not the students, and the parents being criminalized. And university is moving more and more towards a consumerist approach, where here they're trying to buy enrollment via diversity. And the type of this type of written piece is also narrative, personal, and shows evident passion and experience as well. Now, the critical problems of each written piece. Reading number one showed an issue with conflict of opinion. So again, some are for immigration reforms or immigration aids um, of undocumented individuals, while others are not. Um, it shows the instability of DACA, very easily knocked down, um, frozen, um, contradicted. So a lot of issues arise here. It shows undocumented people's tarnished image. That is a great issue because the public opinion is crucial towards having a documented support. And a main issue here with DACA is its outdated requirements. Reading number two has critical issues with the terminology of dreamer and how it dehumanizes undocumented students and narrows down their personality merely to their academic achievements and abilities. Many are expected to succeed in the system where only few are meant to succeed. The influence of outside factors, family, friends, advisors, and teachers all play a role into how the undocumented students are able to be or not be academically successful. Um, and number two, definitely, reading number two definitely focuses on the isolation that being placed on probation causes for all individuals, but specifically for undocumented students. Reading number three focuses on the lack of space and staff provided towards undocumented student resources, the lack of sufficient funding provided, and 
the diversity that is used as a mask to cover up misogyny, racism, homophobia, all these things, and to display the university as someone that's, because they support diversity, none of these issues are around, only to benefit the university itself and putting students on the line. Um, another issue here is the manipulation of funds. And here in this image, we see an image that Eusimer said used to promote its diversity while having an American flag that, while shows diversity, also shows how they're expected to be American or as closely American as they should be. Now, the main arguments that the authors used. The author of reading number one included that people are conflicted with who to believe. With two arguments on different sides, sometimes people don't know who to listen to. Um, it talked about how the DACA is very easily struck down by presidents or by the inability to uphold the questionings that sometimes go towards it. Um, it shows that undocumented status is now seen as a reason to signal out individuals and cast them out and aside. Um, an author of reading number one also focused on the passage of 2012 that allowed those who entered before June 15th of 2007 to apply. So again, that date cuts out a lot of individuals. The author of reading number two countered the issues that she sees with mentioning the value that is tied to academic success. Um, there's a lack of academic achievements, then there's a defect, then the individual is deficient, and this is what she sees the issue with, but she's um, narrowing it down to what goes on within the mind that say, within the people of, within the mind of people who say stuff like that. Um, she mentions that our country excludes the different and imposes assimilation. So again, back to that image of the flag, there's that. And undocumented students have more problems than your typical student. And this shows why they have higher dropout rates, why the toll of being placed on probation is higher on them. Um, she shows that prior issues create the perfect storm. So all these issues pile up against them and lead to more negative effects and results. Reading number three author talked about how at UC Merced, there was only two cubicles and two part-time staff for undocumented student resources. So very limited showing that there's not enough funding, that there's not enough focus and support towards undocumented student resources. The university president Napolitano didn't provide sufficient funds for a permanent fix. Um, the $5 million and $8 million wave of aid that she provided to UC universities was not enough to fix the issues. It was more so to appease and to show that she was helping, but ultimately nothing was fixed. Um, and she shows, the author of reading number three shows that private donations are meant to, un to um, lead undercover money partitioning. So a lot can be robbed from what could be dedicated and allocated to undocumented student resources. And here I have linked a video that shows how I said UC Merced, but how UCLA students are not even allowed to work on campus. So a lot of people say that even if you're undocumented, you should be able to work to pay for educate for your education. And I believe that this video counters that and goes to show how great the issues that they face are. Undocumented students be able to get jobs on UC campuses. The Board of Regents is set to take up the issue tomorrow. This comes following a report the Biden administration is quietly pushing back against the plan. KCAL's Luz Delia Cabrero has reaction tonight. We're Tunisian. We're from North Africa. Omar Almi is a senior at UCLA. He and his family came to the States when he was 15 years old. I'm an undocumented student at UCLA. Almi says the limbo he has faced over the years is not fair. I faced a wide array of challenges as an undocumented student, starting from not having equal access to internships as a student. And then there's his inability to work. I cannot just apply for a job like everyone else could because most of the jobs I'm pretty much disqualified before the application. I, I feel like I should be judged on my abilities, on my stats, on my GPA, on my classes, on the work that I've done, not on something that I couldn't control when I came here as a child. The UC proposal on the table would challenge a 1986 federal law prohibiting people without immigration status from legally working. In this case, the UC aims to create an exception for those brought into the U.S. as children and would have been allowed 
and would have been allowed to work under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA. The government stopped allowing people to enroll in the program in 2021. I didn't know I could apply, and then when I knew about it in community college, it was too late. They shut it down. His friend, Odin Contreras, also a senior at UCLA, is a DACA recipient, and he knows firsthand the difference that protection can make. Absolutely a huge benefit in the sense that I'm actually able to legally work in the United States of America. Which is all he wants for undocumented people like himself. We just want to be give back to our community that we have grown up our life, and it's the only thing that we know. Southern California Congressman Daryl Issa voicing his opposition to the plan, saying in a statement, the state of California and the University of California will do lasting damage if they yield to a pressure campaign and simply pick and choose which federal laws to follow and which to simply ignore. We don't want no handouts. We don't want people giving us money. We just want to work like everyone else. The regents will discuss the issue Thursday behind closed doors. If approved, it would benefit thousands of current students like Almi who would have been allowed to work under DACA. In Westwood, Mustelia Caballero, KCAL News. So now we can move on to the historical context of each reading. Reading number one follows the July 6th Court of Appeals hearing of the Fifth Circuit regarding Biden's claim against getting rid of DACA. It's post the 2012 DACA passage via President Barack Obama back in 2012, and it shows the ripple effects after the Texas federal judge judged President Obama's actions as having exceeded his authority by passing DACA back in 2012. Um, reading number one relies on the consistency following the attempt to pass the DREAM Act of 2001. And when you know it, the DREAM Act is where calling people dreamers came from, because since then, it's been brought up consistently to try to give rights and support to undocumented individuals. Ring number two focuses on the post-2012 post DACA approval. Um, the author's experiences are, of course, pre-DACA, and she shows evident lack of aid and under the table pay that she had to rely on to pay for herself and her education. Um, here, students are seen and uh, are not seen, are mentioned being participant or being participants of pushing for the DACA passage and advocating protesting. Ring number three shows a time of global economic restructuring where UC President Napolitano allocated a wave of $5 million and then $8 million to universities where a New York Times newspaper leaked addresses and names and personal information of undocumented students that they interviewed, where UC President Napolitano addressed DACA under the presidential, um, under the President Trump's presidency in a negative light, and where undocumented students storm a national summit to, um, to push for their word and say in undocumented matters. And here that picture to depicts the national um, the national summit storming. So for the contemporary social context of each reading, reading number one um, is a time when undocumented DACA reliants are fearful. They don't know what's going to happen or what's going to be done. There is resentment from opponents of those who support DACA, that do not support DACA. There's a resentment from those that are against the freezing of DACA. There's overall conflicted opinions and mixed reasonings behind each opinion. Reading number two is a time when undocumented students are struggling with probation status. They have all this pressure on them. The author herself felt confused on the stance of being addressed as a dreamer because she herself wasn't your typical academic achiever. So she didn't know if she should continue pushing for DACA under that light. Um, and it leads to existential crises, both for herself and for under the students that she interviewed. Reading number three is a time when students see where UC Merced's focus is. They see that it's not on them, but rather on its own image. And here they decide to take action. We see public critiques of DACA, of undocumented individuals, and we see the repercussions. We see the negative image, the tarnishing of, of undocumented individuals that this creates. And here this cartoon shows that while undocumented individuals may attempt to lead um, as American as possible lives where they contribute, they're still narrowed down to their identity as illegals. So all three readings had similarities. They all incorporated DACA importance. They showed importance of surrounding opinions to undocumented student um emotions and views, and we see an acknowledge of a documented status as a main stressor. Now they differentiate in the fact that the first focus is mainly on DACA itself, 
The second applies how DACA forced expectations in a documented student image. And it explore and the third explores the use of undocumented status as, as a diversity manipulation by universities and this commercialism strategy that they're taking nowadays. Um, now all three are product productive in the fact that the first gives off an educational standpoint, while the second and third provide crude life experiences and outcomes that along with historical occurrences. Now, I liked personally how personal and diverse the experiences were from re ranging from positive to negative. Um, it opened my life and my eyes to how brutal and undocumented life is and how it's so very much out of their control. There's nothing really they can really do about this aspect of their life. And it shows a side that people should be able to empathize with to focus and support the issue. Now to conclude off reading number one's key point is that DACA is unstable and millions rely on it. This essay was clear and quick to the point. It sympathized with DACA recipients and undocumented individuals without exaggerating, but it could have expanded on the benefits of applying to DACA in contrast to not applying to it at all. So what's the benefit of it? That's I, I believe that's what I would have wanted to see a bit more of. Um, and I had a question, could government ever fully cancel DACA services? So not freeze them, just to new applicants, but also to current users. Reading number two's key point was the term dreamer and how someone is expected to be smart and create stress and magnifies negative effects of failing. This essay provided a detail and heartfelt testimonies. It shows how each individual fought hard to stay afloat academically. Um, I believe that they could have expanded more on the views of what a, on the positive views of what a dreamer is. So not just the negative side of it, but also the positive side. And I was wondering how UCLA met student protests. Reading number three, the key point is to show how universities are commercialized, are, are commercializing their enrollment strategies and how they attempt to buy benefit at the expense of undocumented students. This essay is passionate too. It shows fierce fighting from the undocumented, but it could have expanded on what was done with the second round of money allocated to the UC president. So not that first 5 million, but the 8 million. And if anything, as far as allocation was different. Um, and I was wondering if the UC president of Politonis comments regarding, negative comments regarding documented individuals affected her presidency later on. And here are my references. Thank you.